Oogly doogly. Oh, there's gonna be a great intro, gonna sneeze. No, I'm not, it's fine. You know what? I have a life hack to make this cold and flu season, like, way more magical. What is it? You put glitter in your mouth before you sneeze. That sounds... Actually, that sounds like it would be... You could also, I mean, you could also sort of snort glitter too, so then your snot is glittery. But then if you put it in your mouth, would it not go up your nose anyway? Not if you put it in right before you're going to sneeze. That's true. Because if you put it in any earlier, then you'll just swallow it and then, like, your poop will be glittery. And, like, you can show people your snot and that's not too weird. Uh, Whereas, if you show people other things, <laughs> toilet stuff. Yeah. Toilet well, stuff, they're not going to appreciate it. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Skip Twins podcast. My name is Judith. My name is Chloe. And I already said welcome, so, you know. Together that's... we're the Skip Twins. Hey. Videos and stuff. Are we just assuming that people have never ever uh, listened before? Well, you heard sort of us? have to. You have to sort of encompass everybody. Welcome back, folks. Welcome along if it's your first time. Welcome back if it's not your first time. Yep. Um, you left your coat here the last time. I'll just go get it. Here's your here's your coat for you. Take that home with you. Don't leave it behind again. What if you just gave the wrong person someone else's coat? I'd like to hope the person would be honest enough to say, this ain't my coat. But if it's a really nice coat, I would take it though. Would you? Yeah. What I if there was so. a room of other people and there was someone like staring at you from across the room going, that's my coat. But then you could be like, oh sorry, I thought it was. <laughs> I have one just like it. I've never seen you wear it. I. It's, it's new. new. I got that coat three years ago in a garage sale. Oh, oh, I... For bringing it back. Bringing back the style. I got it on holiday in Morocco. Fair. Okay. I got it in New Zealand. There is some I weird mean, ads on TV. I mean, obviously I wouldn't actually steal someone's coat. We should not... Record. I have I have been tempted to at the same time, though. Like, the stuff's been left behind at like, races and stuff and triathlons. And I'm kind of like, well... If you're not going to take good care on if you're leaving a race <laughs> and take that wetsuit with you, like that's a 200 pound wetsuit, right? If I had that, I, I would know, but they might have, they might have um, been in a rush and just not meant, like, or, or maybe forgot. Like, I can understand goggles, but wetsuits, Judith, wetsuits are massive. They're the size of a person. Yeah. I mean, okay, fair enough, just, but I you shouldn't do that, Chloe, because that's stealing. I haven't. I said I have been tempted. But you have said, away from me, Satan! Lead me not into temptation. Amen. Um, we watched Yes Man. Um, last week. Last week, uh, with Jim Carrey in it. Um, thanks to um, our pal podcaster, Post Sarah, for reminding us that it was a good movie. And then what? We, what? We scheduled it in to our busy schedule and watched it on Friday night and it was excellent and I I loved it and yeah, it's a good movie. Definitely watch it if you get a chance. <laughs> I was a plug. Judith is hyped about Yes Man. It's a really good movie and it also has a great message. You should say yes to more things but also... Don't say yes to everything. Yeah. But I mean, it can bring about a lot of opportunities. I mean, it's, it's good. True. I want you to go out today, people, and say yes to three things that you would normally say no to, provided it's legal and safe. So yeah, if someone asks if you want normal milk in your coffee and you're lactose intolerant, just say no. You can say no to that one. If or... someone says, can I rob you? Don't say yes. Say no and scream and run away. Yeah. And if someone says, hey, Jug or jump off that building, just make sure that you have parachutes. Well, I think jumping off buildings is illegal anyway. Even if you do have a parachute. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Don't jump off things, guys. Unless it's only like a single step, but also make sure to bend your knees when you land so that you don't hurt yourself. And while we're giving advice, lift with your knees, not with your back. It's really hard to do, though. Yeah, I usually use my hands, but, you know, it's the joke I was going to make I'm real sad. <laughs> but yeah, what else has been going on in life? 
the countdown to Christmas is on. Yes. We are at 87 sleeps, people, on the 29th of September. Woohoo! Like, I think we're getting quite good at that, leaning away from the microphone yeah. to scream. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I am hyped to the neck. You know when I wasn't hyped? When? Yesterday and Friday. I was exhausted. Yeah. Because we've been training this week, but we've also, like the past two weeks, we've also been like looking after the house and feeding the animals and... Um, yeah, it's, it's been tiring. But my way and daddy are coming back, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, I was real tired. I'm still pretty tired. I need like a week of sleeping. Please and thank you. But I'm going to try and push through till Christmas. It's only, how many sleeps? 87. 87 sleeps and then I can have a few days off for Christmas. But I mean, really, you only need to get 85 sleeps because Christmas like, Eve. Christmas Eve, time. yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's, um, mum and dad have been away for a while and we have, like, what, three dogs and they, they've they missed, they've missed daddy. They have. They've missed master. Like, for the first couple of days, they were fine. Wherever it was, we were going it was over sort to feed like, them. It was sort of like they had their freedom. They were like, oh, we can have a party. And then they were like, oh, we're not having a party. Oh, uh, he's still not back yet. Okay. And... Shep especially, Shep's um, the call one of the collie dogs, and I think it was it was Thursday or Friday. I went up to feed him, and he could hear me walking up, and his tail was wagging, and I could hear him sort of getting a wee bit jumpy and excited. And then I turned the corner, and he just stopped, and he was kind of like, "Oh, it's, uh, it's you, okay." And I gave him a wee pet, and I told him that it was only two more sleeps till mummy and daddy got home. But he still just wasn't hyped about the food. He was yeah. still kind of like. I just miss him. Oh, And Susan hasn't really been herself. Although, I think now it could be that she ate part of our music stand whenever we were taking it out to church. That maybe would have made her a wee bit sort of... Uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it would have passed by now. Yeah, no, I, that's what I mean. She's alright now. She's had a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone through the system. It's all good. She's over it. Um, I think it's really weird when animals do human things. What do you mean? Like coughing and yawning. Not yawning. Yawning is okay. Dogs Sneezing. do really weird coughs though. Like dogs kind of go like this. <sighs> yeah. Like I haven't heard a human do that. I've done that. Well, yes, I've heard humans do that, but like it's never, I was going to say appropriate. It's never dignified. Yeah. Like you do that in the privacy of your own home. Yeah. Not in public. Yeah. Unless you're a dose at the gym. Goodness gracious. There was someone on the bikes with me the other day and they kept on sneezing and coughing and they weren't covering their mouth or anything. And then they got up and they didn't wipe down. And I was like, guys, no one go on that third bike. Deirdre, don't go on that bike. Someone put flu germs all over it. You're 70, you might die. Go on this one. Whenever I sneeze or cough, I try to um, cough and sneeze into my, my elbow pit. <laughs> You know, the bend in your elbow. Yeah. Is that what it's called, an elbow pit? I try and cough into my arm anyway. The crook but of your elbow? That, yeah. Um, elbow pit's quicker to say. But then I always make sure to wipe down extra, extra good. And sort of look around and go, I'm, I'm I do cleaning. <laughs> I knew I coughed, but I'm... Look at me wipe this with the disinfectants. Sp- I'm... Look... I've sweated all over it, but now it is soaking wet with disinfectant. I'ma just get some more cloth and dry that off. Oh, I dripped. I dripped a wee bit more sweat. I'll just. I'll just. That's wipe always that. my problem. I'm wiping off, and then I drip some more sweat on. I'm like, I just wipe there. I try to. I try to like wipe my face first, and then and then wipe the machine. Don't wipe your face with disinfectant. Oh yeah, it stings. It runs into your eyes, and it stings, buddy. <laughs> think you'd actually done it but okay <laughs> like i had two two bits of cloth and one had disinfectant and one was just a bit damp for me wiping my forehead used the wrong one to write my head again um it wasn't an ideal situation to be honest but we got through it survived <laughs> we survived i you think haven't... i grew stronger from the experience so. your eyes didn't i don't think my sight has deteriorated any no thankfully well that's good it is Do you know, what makes a good podcast um, the presenters have to have a good relationship 
where they can bounce off one another and, and make some good jokes. Uh, you gotta have some features or some gimmicks and also no big spaces of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was going to say at the top one for what makes a good podcast is has to exist. But that's like saying anything. Like, what makes the best pizza? Oh, it exists. It has to be a pizza. Yeah. Like, guys, you're missing the fundamentals if you don't say that. You could be like, I have a great podcast. And be like, oh, where can I find it? And they'll be like, I haven't done it yet. It's not a great podcast then, is it, mate? No. It's, great. it's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, fair, but also fair, okay. But I don't think you need to say it exists. Well, no, you don't, but I mean, just, I just want to cover all bases. There might be someone listening and they'll be like, I have a podcast, it's real good, you should listen to it. I haven't done it yet, though. And it's like, well, it's not a good podcast, but this isn't a good podcast. But you know what? We try. And trying our best is what we do. We do. And I think we do it. I'm not going to say well, but I mean, I think you can tell that we try. Yeah, it's a mediocre effort. Yep. I'll put up my notes for this podcast on Twitter <laughs> afterwards. Okay. <laughs> like, this is how, how much I try. Did you know that vending machines kill four times as many people per year as, as sharks? How do you, how do I England that better? Vending, vending machines, machines kill, kill four, four times, times more as many people, people than sharks. sharks do every year. Four times more people than sharks every year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how do vending machines kill people? Because people try and climb up and like... And it squashes them. Yeah. Well then that's not the vending machine killing someone. That's someone... <laughs> <laughs> like the vending machine doesn't eat them or like I jump know, on them. It's, the vending machine squashes them. But it's, it's like not the death by vending machine. But it's not like the, the human. <laughs> it's not the vending machine's fault. I don't know why the vending machine here is getting a bad rap. Well, I mean, it's not the shark's fault that humans just swim into their way, and the sharks are like, "Oh, hey, the that's shark, good." The shark makes an actual decision to go nom, 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 nom. nom. But Whereas the, the vending machine doesn't actually have a brain, so it can't choose to. How eat do some. you know? Judith, how do you know? So you think vending machines actually have brains? That's why we have to feed it money, Judith, to keep it happy. No, Chloe, that's for the company to pay for the goods within the vending machine. But who runs the company? Judith, the vending machines are the bosses. So somewhere there's a vending machine in charge of some vending machines and the vending machines are sent out into different places to vend the goods? Yes. How do they fill them up then? Why do they have people? That they come employ in? people because the people are like, just don't crush me, okay? I have a family, okay? Just I'll fill I'll fill them up, okay? Just don't. But does the vending machine pick someone or does it put out an ad and then? It puts out an ad and then there's like, it's like in Doctor Who whenever there's like a human who's standing like as a front for like the aliens. There's like a human guy that's been like, you know what, vending machines. I got you right. We can take over the world. Okay, and occasionally, occasionally, I'll let you kill someone, but, you know, we're gonna have a top notch business here. Part of me is intrigued by what you're saying, and another part of me has completely zoned out. <laughs> like, I was aware of what you were saying, but I was also really focused on the corner of the wall there. <laughs> What's so interesting about the corner of the wall? I really don't know. I really. It's just. A little crease <laughs> in the wallpaper. <laughs> I am disappointed that you didn't. No, like I said, part of me was focused, part of me was riveted by that <laughs> explanation. No, but to be fair, I do that all the time. I'll be listening to someone be like, yeah, yeah, wait, hang on, wait, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got the bit when you did this, this, and this, and then this, but what came in between there? And they were like, you weren't listening. I was like, I was listening. I just proved. I just said this, this, and this, but I just missed this little, one little bit. I do that all the time. There's always like one little bit that I miss, and then, especially in the sermon, to be fair. <laughs> I was listening today, and I was like, yeah, this is good. Preach it, Rev Keith. Yeah. And then I was like, what am I going to have for dinner? We have to cook our own dinner. And then the next thing he was talking about something else, like, wait, how do we, right, how do we get here? What? 
Okay, right. I'm just going to try and piece this together. And then I was trying to piece together how we got from like point A to point C. And then I missed point D and E. And then we were on F and then we were singing and I was like, all right, okay, well, I'm lost. Got the main gist though. We didn't sing though, we played our instruments. Yep, I think it's nice playing my flute. I've missed it. I have missed my clarinet too. Um, but we need to fix our music stand because currently we're playing sitting down, which is not ideal. It's just very uncomfortable, I find. And I, I need to take more breaths than normal. Right, hold up. We're, we're going to take a wee pause here, a wee minute. I'm just watching the TV. They already did that song. No, they didn't. They put up the banner at the start and then at the end. Oh, right, okay. No, but like the do it again one. <laughs> They've done that song, Judith. They, because they're doing it again. Why? No, <laughs> that's the title of the song. No, but why are they doing the song again? Because, I mean, you don't just do songs once. You do in shows like this. Like, radio stations don't play songs twice in the same, like, radio presenter. Yes, they do. Do they? Yes, they do. I know, but they at least leave it an hour. That's at least, like, ten minutes they've left. No. Yes. No. Judith, it is! No. Judith! It's not. Yes. It's not. It is! It's not. I do specifically remember that song title coming up. Maybe it was different people singing it. No, it's still the same people. Okay. Oh, I think that one's a live version. So, but still, I don't like live versions of songs. Yeah, it's weird. Especially whenever the main singer stops singing and the audience starts singing and all you hear is... I don't um, like that. Yeah. If you're ever in an audience and the guy asks you to sing, just be like, no, we paid you to sing. Um, or just sing, like don't scream and whoop and yeah. Sorry, I got a wee bit distracted there. It's really annoying, I don't know if you do that though, like. But at the same time, I suppose you're watching them live, you're hyped. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got any good facts? You normally have some good facts. You can make swimming ten times more fun by doing it with a harmonica in your mouth. Swimming? Yeah. So like every time you take a breath you're... It's like, bloop! <laughs> bloop! I don't know if it works underwater though. It probably does. It would make a lot more bubbles. True. But um, also another one that is quite appropriate for our podcast although it's not really it's just because it's about yawning but whenever you yawn you have to it's always good to throw a thumbs up just so deaf people know that you're not screaming Judith's just doing that right now just if I was deaf me. I would know she was not screaming that's good that's good I'm glad I'm glad um we always talk about tv shows and stuff uh lately we have started to watch Gavin and Stacey again I think yeah well, you say we started, we started and we finished. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a very good series, highly recommend it. Um, yeah. Chloe, if you were to pick a character that you related to, who would you pick? I don't know. Bryn. <laughs> <laughs> and why would that be? Because he's just so excitable. He doesn't quite understand the world around him, but he's so keen. <laughs> He's so enthusiastic about life, even though he doesn't really understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. I think Bryn is, is good. But also Smithy, because I feel like sometimes I'm just left behind. I'm just sort of like, and I'm, I'm quite bitter. And, <laughs> and, I and sometimes you get so ravenous you can barely see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically always hungry, which makes sense. Um, oh, there's Cliff Richard. Oh, hey, Cliff. That's from a few years ago. He's quite young there. Yeah. And also the quality. Oh, that's of the a time. really good song too that he's singing. Anyway, right. <laughs> Can you pause this? No. Oh, okay. We're not that fancy. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Although, yeah. if it's been going the way it is, I might, might repeat it later. Ow, I just punched the thing. I really don't think they repeated it. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that they did. Okay. Well, I'm a mixture of Bryn and Smithy because I'm dramatic, but also I haven't got a clue what's going on. <laughs> And also you only have like 12 favourite songs. <laughs> that is true also, yes. Yes. Would you ever go storm chasing? Like in Twister? Yeah. I think so, yeah. I think it would be good crack. 
But I don't think I, I wouldn't like it try to get as close as they did, but I would like to get like close enough to properly see a twister. Um so like, you'd pretty much be as close as they were. That is that is fair. But I could have binoculars and then I could just be looking at it and seeing it tear up grass from its roots. Why would you? Yeah, I'd like to see a flying cow. Fair enough. That's did you know that 7% of Americans think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? <laughs> it's okay, like 1% of British people think that hay, like, um, bales in fields are cow eggs. Is that a legit fact? Because mine is a legit fact. Mine is not a legit fact, but it was on Greg James' fact controller that someone thought that... Fact controller from January? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, yeah. Legit, 7% think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. So where do they think strawberry milk, like strawberry milkshake, come from? Like magical pink cows? Bro, Cliff Richard's singing at a funeral and they put it on TV! (laughs) No! I wonder whose funeral is. You don't do that! It's not a very well-attended funeral. Well, it's quite a small church, to be fair. Oh, that zoom! Oh, that was extreme dramatic zoom! (laughs) Is he talking or is he actually singing? Can we? I don't think he's singing anymore. Can we? Just quickly. I think. I was fair that's play. Quite, that's quite high that's... note for a man. Fair Ooh, it's not really that high for a woman though. Yeah. He's pointing in the air. He's singing with his hands. I mean, I've seen a lot of people lately who sing with their hands and it's it's something that I've become very aware of. And maybe it's the Presbyterian in me, <laughs> but it makes me feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> do you play with your body though whenever you're playing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> whenever you're playing the flute, do you like? Oh, I do sway a wee bit, but that's just to keep time because I'm really bad at counting. <laughs> One, two, three. Because <laughs> we were like practicing today. Oh, he's really getting into it. He's fist pumping the air now. Anyway, um... Yeah, no, what was I saying? Stuart uh, was, like, about to tell me off, I think, for not holding notes for long enough. And I was like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I just, I just don't, I'm just very bad at counting. And I need, I need a way to sort of force myself almost. Oh, we've got another close up of the gasket on the TV. <laughs> I mean, it's a panning shot, to be fair. It's not an actual close up. I think that they show that it's a song name at the start and the end, so yeah. maybe that's where I got that's it from. That's what I tried to say. Well, it's not the way I heard it, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the way you're... That's cool. Um, here, Chloe. Yes. Do you know who John Deere is? He's a dear friend. No, I don't know who he is, but he sounds hot. What? <laughs> Are we genuinely talking about the tractor here? Just a, I mean tractor. Just you always hear everybody talking about John Deere and how he's some man. No, should I, honey? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that if you lift a kangaroo's tail off the ground, it can't hop? I mean, I knew that, but I don't know if our listeners knew that. I think it's fairly obvious when you think about it. Why? If you're holding a kangaroo's tail, it can't move anywhere. No, but they're just saying lift it off the ground. Yeah, but it can't move if you're holding it. No, but like, you just have to... Like, put your hand underneath it and lift the tail up. You don't necessarily have to be holding it. Why? Because it knocks their centre of gravity off. That's really confusing. Like, they'll probably just fall over. Poor kangaroos. Why would you lift their tails off the ground? Don't lift kangaroo tails off the ground. It's cruel. Kangaroos don't deserve that. And they won't be able to hop. I mean, they'll probably punch you in the face. You'll be behind them, it's okay. They'll still turn around and punch you in the face. Okay, don't go near kangaroos. Unless you're with a professional kangaroo person. They're a bit scary. A kangarooist. Did you know... Right, this is my last fact that I have. If you keep going north... Well, if if you're on the, the earth, the planet... Um, what are you doing? There's a guy on the TV and he's um he has his arms folded... Um, with like his hands resting on the opposite bicep and he's he's drumming along and it just looks weird and I was just trying to copy him going what in the world would possess you to drum like that? Why do we... we, we really... He's over there in the green. 
We really shouldn't watch this on TV because, or record a podcast and run on the TV because we just get distracted by what's on TV. I like to think I did a fairly good audio description there. I think it was quite good. Let us know, listeners, if you think it was a good audio description. I want you to film a video of yourself doing that, what, what I just described. So arms folded, hands on opposite biceps and just drumming along. Almost like you're patting your yeah, biceps. But I mean, he's drumming along. We can't hear the music, but I'm assuming he's keeping fairly good time. You've, you have a lot of assumptions about this man that he has a good sense of rhythm. He doesn't have a great... He's standing out in the crowd here because everybody else is sort of beige and blacks and stuff. And he's he's in green. green. So you think that he must know what he's doing? Oh, he stopped. Now he's picking his nose. Oh. Wonderful. Great. Oh, he's clapping. Did a wee clap there. Fair play. Right. Wonderful. Anyway. Uh, at skit underscore twins. That's S-K-I-T underscore T-W-I-N-S on Twitter and Instagram. Just search skit twins on Facebook and YouTube. And you'll find us. And send stuff, send videos, and all that sort of stuff. Um, Judith. I didn't get to finish my facts, sorry. Sorry, I'll just do a wee thing here now, and then you can do one, okay? Okay. Okie dokie. Talk about voice notes. Well, you're just telling me to talk about voice yeah, notes. Yeah, because you said that voice notes were the future. They are great, because you don't have to type. You can do it almost hands-free. I'm very bad at typing with one hand, but with one hand I can hold the wee record button and talk at the same time, which is... Good. And I just think they're really handy. But not so much in public because I'm not a huge fan of talking into your phone or like speaking on the phone in public places really. It really unnerves me as well whenever people, you know the way you can have phone calls whenever you have your earphones in and then the wee microphone bit? Yeah. That really unnerves me whenever people are walking along talking to themselves. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not a fan. Like if I was doing it I would always have to have like my ha- my, my phone up. Yeah. Like off of the apprentice yeah or my phone just to my ear ideally but yeah no i'm not a fan of this whole earphone talking to yourself thing what like, do you think of voice notes chloe what is your opinion or what is your I view i think they're pretty good like this is essentially just a really long voice note that That's also basically is true. what podcasts are um because we're just sort of telling you about our lives but just we're not giving you a chance to respond sorry Respond now, scream, shout, say hey, whatever you want in these la- in these five seconds. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're a bit rude. Yeah. Um I mean that's I'm sorry to hear that. If that was a negative response. Um uh, or I mean that's great, fantastic, great news. That was a really high note you hit. Alternatively that was a really low note you hit. I didn't know you could scream that loud or for that long. Or with that amount of intensity. I really believe that you were in pain. There we go. I think we've covered pretty much everything yeah. there. Um, um, Did you know, if you're on the planet Earth, yes. if you keep walking north, uh-huh. eventually you're going to start going south. Yes. Right? But if you start walking east, you're never going to start, you're never going to end up going west. You're always going to be going east. Yeah. Just let that sink in. Now not blow your mind a wee bit. No, because the rotation of the earth kind of makes it. I'm sorry, I ruined it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm just... I thought it was a cool fact. But it, is I mean, a, it is a cool fact, but it's just some that... You know, it's I'm, not for, I'm, it's not for already, everybody. I already know. <laughs> you can't just say things that you can't... Just, I feel like... I don't know. Like, I know that a fact. You can't say I'm bad because I I never said you were bad. I'm just, I'm just a bit disappointed that you didn't show a bit more enthusiasm. Sorry, do you want to do that fact again? Okay. Did you know... <laughs> did you know that um, if you're on the earth and you, you start walking north and keep walking north, eventually you'll go south. But um, if, you, if you start walking west... You'll then you you'll never you'll never walk east. You'll always walk west. No way! That's so cool. My mind has been blown. Wow! I gotta tell everybody this fact. This is gonna win me some pub quiz. Woo! Facts. Um, that was a bit over the top. I didn't really. You want somewhere in the middle? I wanted yeah. Do you know, do one more time and no. I'll try and get <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not. Okay, gonna... just say you'll never walk east. You will continue to walk west. You will never be going east. Wow. That is, that was, 
That was what I was looking for. Just say that again. Wow. That is... <laughs> that's the one. That's the one. We're not dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people don't realise that we... Our life... Like... That oh, we are like... I'm like our, that. Like, I'm like that child that talks about... Have you, you ever had, had a dream where you could... said <laughs> that you wish that you could, that you you are, that, that you would, could, that, that you could, would, that you, that you could, could do anything? I'm basically that child today. But, um... A lot, what a lot of people don't realise about us is that we do a lot of stuff, yeah, that's pretty cool, but also our life revolves around the bus timetable. Everything we do, it's kind of like, right, we have 15 minutes here and then we have to go here so we can get the bus at this time. And I don't think, I don't think people realise how stressful that can be. Like, it's okay if you live in sort of like a town whenever there's buses all the time. Yeah, we have about, what, maybe five Four or six buses, buses yeah. spread throughout the day. Uh, it's not an ideal situation, to be honest. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> I was going to say, coach, if you're trying to ring me and I'm on the bus, <laughs> and then you give off to me because I don't answer. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's why, because if I'd missed that bus, I'd be stuck in the town all night, and I'm not going to pay £20 for a taxi. I would yeah. rather just sleep on it. I wouldn't rather sleep on the street. I would rather walk home because it's like eight mile. And I mean, I've run a half marathon. <laughs> <laughs> and you wrecked your foot doing it. So, you know, let's not. That's why I said walk. It would take me like twice as long, but. I mean, you did a half marathon in under two hours. Yeah, so if I walked it, it would probably be like, say. An hour and a half. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> well, yeah, no, because you're only doing it mine. So. I try, yeah, half. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 I mean, maybe two hours. Say two hours. Yeah. I'd say two and a half. Because I'd have to stop and get a wee drink and probably stop to pee. And that means I would have to, like, traipse into the woods. <laughs> I suppose. Or, like, stand at a door and just be like, oh my word, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe. Right, come on, Chloe, you can do it. Me and you could totally do that, though. Like, we... Excuse me. Sorry. Can I borrow your toilet, please? And then the door would get closed, I'd probably have to try like six people and I'd be like, but the sixth person I'd be like, oh, I really need to go. Excuse me, can I use your toilet? No, I'm going in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I like to think people would like let you use their toilet if you needed to. I mean, I would like to hope so too, but at the same time, like, there's some people out there that trust no one. Fair. There. Do you, if you didn't give a thumbs up there, I don't know if you're screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, yeah, Chloe. Yes. Door etiquette. Have we talked about that before? I don't know. Okay. If someone's coming behind you and you're opening the door, what do you do? Do you hold it open it, for them, or do you sort of walk through and then like put your arm behind you to? It sort of depends how close they are. Like if they're fairly close, then yeah, you would sort of like step back and let them through first but yeah. if they're quite far away you'll sort of walk through slowly and then sort of turn around and be like oh yeah i got you bro i got you bro and then if they're not there in time you just sort of let it go and just go sorry yeah so the what you're saying is there does come a point where if you've misjudged it and the person is further away than you thought than you thought they were then it's okay to sort of let it go and just sort of go sorry is that is that what you're saying yeah, but also at the same time, there's some idiots that like, not idiots, but there's some people and they sort of, they don't speed up whenever they see you holding yeah. the door open. Yeah, I think that's part of the etiquette too. If you see someone holding the door open for you, you speed up. But also, if you see someone and they're holding the door for you and you weren't intending to go that way, do you embarrass them and say, no, nah, I'm not going that way, mate? Or do you run and go into that building anyway and then walk out? I mean, either? you don't necessarily have to say no. Nah. You just sort of go, nah. Like, you, it's not really embarrassing. You just sort of... But if someone stood back to attention to hold the door open for you? Oh, well, yeah, I would then. But, like, why would you be walking that close to a building? That is true. But, I mean, I'm just trying to cover every possibility here. No, I mean, I wouldn't... I wouldn't walk that close to a building. And if anyone was walking that close to a building and they decided they weren't going in there, then I'd be like, okay, then. Bye. 
I would follow them and make sure they opened the door for me. Okay, that's what I would do. Fair enough. Fair enough. We do some sponsors. Our podcast is brought to you today by Door Etiquette. Door Etiquette. Holding the door open for people because you're a nice person. This podcast is also brought to you by Glitter. Glitter. Make this flu season more magical. This podcast is also brought to you by Animal Sneezes. Animal Sneezes. Ten times more gross than human sneezes, but also ten times more cute. This podcast is also brought to you by Harmonicas. Harmonicas. Make breathing more fun. This podcast is also brought to you by Brown Cows. Brown Cows. Doesn't matter how you say it, they don't give chocolate milk. This podcast is also brought to you by the music channel we're currently watching. The music channel we're currently watching. Bringing us lots of distractions, to be honest. (laughs) Finally, this podcast is brought to you by... I don't have another sponsor. It's completely gone out of my head. This podcast is finally brought to you by Vending Machines. Vending Machines, please don't squish me. Fantastic. Those are our sponsors this week. I had it in my head and then as I went to say it, it just disappeared. Was that the actual sponsor that you were going for? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, do we have it? Did anyone message us? No, no one did. No one, no one did. Um, which is a bit sad. It's a bit disappointing. It is a bit disappointing. Guys. Guys, where you at? Get your game together. No one loves us. No one, no one cares on a Sunday afternoon. That we are doing a podcast. I even put up it. I I put it up twice, um, within about an hour of each other. Well, well that is incredibly like. I'm not even mad because we are late at doing the podcast this week. To be fair, it is currently five past five, and normally we do it sort of around three. I think maybe we don't. We know we do. Yeah, around that time. I'd like to say happy birthday to Paul Clark's dad. Oh, is it Paul Clark's dad's? He just, he put it on Twitter there. Um, So happy birthday to him. 92 today. Happy birthday, Mr. Clark. Unless it's 29 and I read the or Mr. Clark cake the wrong way around. Senior. But, yeah. um, That's four birthdays I know of for today. Why, be... What four birthdays do you know? Uh, Jessica, Lauren, Andrew and Paul Clark's dad. Lauren... I'm not going to give the full name on the podcast. Uh, relation, Lauren. Friend. From school. School friend's big sister. School friend's big sister. This is just embarrassing. Let's just move on. I'll tell you after. Ducks! <laughs> <laughs> That's all you needed to say, Judith. Hi, Alexander Armstrong. Alexander Armstrong is... What a guy. He's so cool. I want to meet him. There's so many people I want to meet and I don't think I'm ever going to meet them because they'll walk past me in the street and everybody will be like, oh my word, that was Alexander Armstrong. I'll be like, huh? I'm still not over the fact that, I mean, we've met Greg James, what, maybe three times? Uh Uh-huh. And then I saw him in the street in London and I was like, is that Greg James? And I stared at him and I swear he looked at me um, from across the street and then I was like, nah, that wouldn't be him. I'm pretty sure he would recognise me. I mean, we've met three times, practically best friends. And then later on, I saw a video of him and he was wearing that outfit. And I was like, it flippin' was. Should have just gone up and been like, what's up, bud? And then I would never do that to a person, ever. I mean, to be honest, whenever people are like, oh my word, I saw this person. I was like, honestly, I was making sure I wasn't going to trip up. (laughs) I'm just because I've got no depth perception. I'm just disappointed in myself because I was like... You should have trusted yourself. Yeah, I was like 70% convinced that it was him. And I think if I had like... We were like on the street in London and everybody's sort of walking whatever way and we were, he was on the inside and we were on the outside and I was like I could just if I could get to the inside I could walk past him make sure it's him and just be like hi Greg and then that be it and I would be satisfied I would have at least seen that it was definitely him and it would have satisfied my curiosity but instead I, I found out on Twitter which wasn't as satisfying but also I was kind of like flipping knew it fair Fair. Celebrities, if you see me in the street, say hey. Alternatively, friends, if you see celebrities in the street, just push me in front of them because, like, I have an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there. Literally, I have a visual impairment. <laughs> Shall we get coffee? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there. 
Oh, you're... I recognize you from somewhere. You're someone famous, right? Sorry, can't really tell. If things are a bit blurry, not because I bumped into you, but just because... <laughs> <laughs> By this point, they would have like called security or walked yeah, on. Yeah, I would just ramble, I think. If you met Alexander Armstrong in London someday, what would you do? Or even in Northern Ireland. I mean, I don't know why I'm focusing on London, but if you ever met Alexander Armstrong, what would be the first thing you say to him? Hi. Like, say you met him in the street, like you just walked past him and you knew it was him. Oh, well, I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> why? I wouldn't be able to. Like, I'd be like, I'd walk past him and be like, that was Alexander Armstrong. Right, what if, <laughs> what if it was like in a cafe or something and he was sitting at the table next to you? Oh, no, but you know... You don't interrupt celebrities. Like, if they're having coffee, don't interrupt them. No, but like, he's just sitting at the table next to you, right? And you know it's him. You recognise him. And then you like, you're you're walking out. You end up walking out at the same time. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should make it more interesting. I just go, wind turbine. Because <laughs> it would be a conversation starter. He would be like, excuse me. And you would be like, big fan. <laughs> massive fan actually I'm just hey <laughs> can I get a photo oh yeah sure you're gonna have to take it though <laughs> that is my greatest fear of ever meeting anyone famous them being like like me being like I would never be the person who actually who would say that's Nick Briggs off of Daleks in Dr. <laughs> me sorry he's a beard <laughs> <laughs> This whole sentence has been a shambles. <laughs> Should I start again there? Um, I I couldn't ask someone for a selfie. I want, like, even whenever I'm out with my friends, I'm like, I want to get a picture of this moment so that people know I have friends. But I can't because I'm afraid that they'll be like, oh yeah, sure, you take it. And I'll be like, I can't, guys, I can't, <laughs> I can't see the phone screen when it's that far away. <laughs> And so, yeah, if I ever met a celebrity, if they were like, do you want a photo? I'd be like, yeah, here's my phone. <laughs> why, why, why don't you want to take it? I have short arms. <laughs> yeah, like I would probably do I that. Wouldn't. I, I would make, I would make something up too because I wouldn't want them to feel really awkward by going, I'm visually impaired. Because <laughs> like most of the time you say that and like if they haven't realised up to that point and you go, actually I'm visually impaired, they sort of go, oh, um, uh, there's a step. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like we have literally walked through an entire building, and I think now that, you're warning me about a step. <laughs> I think at that point I would just be like, "Listen, it's been great. <laughs> I'm just gonna go find my dog. <laughs> I think I left my stick on a tree somewhere. This is why we need a TV show. We need to like explain this so that if we do meet people, <laughs> we could be like, guys, <laughs> I, it's okay. I can't remember where it was. Oh, it was a job interview thing with the Prince's Trust. <laughs> <laughs> and we got through there for like the whole day. It was grand. I didn't say anything. The minute I said, oh, I have a visual impairment, they were like, there's a door there. And I was like, love, I've just come through it about three times. <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> <laughs> there's a door there yeah I know I just came through it <laughs> watch yourself there's a chair there I was just sitting on that chair <laughs> I literally needed no prompting to come and find that chair and sit down <laughs> but I think that's so funny if you were able to just be like yeah no I just I was just sitting on it <laughs> I wish I had the sass just to be like oh sorry this chair <laughs> <laughs> Although chances are, <laughs> I would be aiming to be like, oh, sorry, this chair and pick it up. I'd be like, this chair and just fall over it or something. <laughs> or scram scrabble for it and miss it and like, try to. Sorry, no, sorry, let me just. Perception. <laughs> yeah. Fun times. I think, I think we should definitely do VI files about this kind of thing again. Yeah. I want VI files to be on the BBC. So everyone, if you are on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or if you have an email, find an email address for the BBC and email them and send them a link to any of our VI files videos. I think the dog one or the one about the pants, like one of the first VI oh, files. the new glasses. New glasses one. I think those are the best two that we've done. So ideally one of those two and send them to the BBC and be like, guys, give these girls a job. 
Thank you very much. Very much appreciate that. Thank you very much. Would appreciate that muchly. Um, we've been going 45 minutes. No, I don't like saying the time out loud, but 45 minutes is a decent length. I know you always get to about 15 minutes and you're like, oh, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be hard to stretch this out. But then once I get talking, you just can't shut me up. Is this guy on point of celebrities? Is that hired from the Halifax ads? No, I don't think so. I'm going to take a picture of these people so that we can... His name's... Uh... Did we miss it? Yeah. Where's Nick Briggs? Oh, he's, oh, he's over, over here there. down the bottom. He's oh, got 26 it. points. 26 points is pretty good. It's I don't not, know how pointless works. You're supposed to get, like, this lowest score. Right. There's Tim. There's your man. There's Xander. That's Alexander Armstrong. Tim. Timothy. Anyway, right, just going to get photos. We're going to end the podcast rather than just have a running commentary of... um, What's his name? Red. Red. Redo. Redo. No, it's just red with two Ds. Is it? Redded. Red, Red is, is why would you name yourself a colour? Red is, uh, because they like he didn't names. name himself. Somewhere on the heart. I don't know. Anyway, right, um contact us, skit.twins at gmail dot com, skit under slash twins um on Twitter and Instagram. Yep. You're not gonna correct me there? Um, I'm trying to tweet things. Okay, well just trying to tweet things, so I'm just gonna um, skit underscore twins on Twitter and Instagram. You can also follow our fitness account thing, which is. Oh no, Judith, you might have to look fit this up. The underscore fit dot twins. We think. Or possibly. We're gonna the need. The underscore fit dot twins. Oh, Judith got it. So the underscore fit dot twins we are going to change that to something easier to remember but um right now that's what it's at um blame chloe she created it i i was just trying to roll with it but yeah um thank you very much for listening thank you for coming along share this with your friends remember to take your coat with you this time otherwise chloe will steal it remember to give a thumbs up whenever you're yawning and remember that vending machines are more dangerous than sharks in the grand scheme of things yeah well, if you think about it, there's probably a lot more vent machines about than sharks. Yeah, you're more likely to run into a vent machine than a shark. Yeah. Not that you should be running into vent machines, but... Yeah, that's a solid piece of advice, I think, to end on. Don't run into vent machines, because they might kill you! Can you keep talking a minute, because I think I'm going to okay. sneeze, and that will be an apt oh, ending. Okay. Um, if you can be anything, be kind. Just be nice to people. Don't be... Don't be an idiot. Smile at people. Hold doors open. It's not going to happen. Um,